Hello gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to go over a hack that you can use on your G-Scale uh, rolling stock. So, as you know I have the Garden Railroad out back. Um, and, you know, I don't have tons of money to dump in a rolling stock. And also with the two small steam engines, it really wouldn't look good to have bigger... Uh, pieces of rolling stock out there so I've actually kind of come across uh, these made by Bachman it's part of their uh, little big haulers line that's what the box look like in the store um, anyway they come factory with these uh, chintzy hook and loop couplers that uh, isn't compatible with anything that I have. So I'm going to swap off the KD couplers. I'm going to show you how. I'm going to do a quick airbrushing um, on this just to kind of take the uh, sheen off this plastic. Um, like I said, these are pretty low budget models, um, but with the airbrushing, it will uh, kind of dull that and they actually look pretty good. Um, it's a pretty rainy, raw, actually snowing right now, crappy day outside, so um, it's actually this wet outside. I grabbed this from outside. Uh, this one has been out all summer. Um, as you can see, the airbrushing here and here, and I airbrushed the end of frame. Again, it just makes it a little bit older. Um, like I said, these cars aren't super expensive, but this one was like 30 bucks at the store. I probably can get them on eBay cheaper, but uh, like I said, they, they're good for just towing one or two behind one of my small uh, steam locomotives. Uh, I'm not sure they're actually any particular scale. Like I said, these were more aimed towards uh, children, but for the small railroad out back, they work pretty good. So we'll put this one aside and get to work on it. Alright, so I'm using the KD907. Uh, G scale coupler. Um, it's kind of a joke in the model railroad world that Katie makes, uh, you know, 20 sets of instructions and only three couplers. So um, these aren't officially for this, but you just remove the one screw here holding on this cheap uh, hook and loop coupler. And the Katie comes with all kinds of springs uh, that you'll thusly lose as soon as you open the box. Um, I don't use the centering springs. Again, I'm only pulling one or two cars. I don't think it's that necessary in the fight with them. Um, I've never had a problem not using them. And also, like on real rolling stock, there's no, there's no centering springs. So uh, There's one little screw here, again, that you'll promptly lose as soon as you come in. Take it out of the box. Um, that just holds this cover plate together. Right, you take that, install it just like that, and uh, then you take. They give you uh, two screws. Not sure if that's coming out there. Um, they give you two sizes, a really, really long one and a medium length one. Use the medium length one for these cars or else you'll go through the floor like I did on the uh, red coach. So The holes are all pre-drilled for you. Um, like I said, these were cheap cars, but you know, for a garden railroad that you know, you're just getting started or like me, you get so many hobbies, you can't devote tons of time to this one. So, so there it is. Um, grab the other car. Just test our couplers. Uh, they're the same height, so that's good. going to get our air brushing box. Um, make sure you wear your, a respirator or something like that. 
Um, I'm just going to turn on the fan to kind of circulate the air in this room and move this tripod so that you can see it better. I'm just using a cheap Harbor Freight airbrush with a, uh, a custom colored paint that I made. It's just uh, some acrylics dissolved in alcohol and water and uh, test it out there. I'm going to throw on the mask and I'm going to stop talking and get this painted up. Like I said, I'm not trying to repaint the whole model. I'm just trying to give it some... Uh, darkness and some weathering so nice easy stroke Um, if you're wondering, like I said this is a Harbor Freight airbrush um, with Central Pneumatic or whatever it is. Yeah, Central Pneumatic. That was, it was pretty cheap. Um, like I said, I don't do a lot of weathering, um, but it is nice to take the plastic bright shine off this. Uh, if you're familiar with real railroad equipment, you'll know that anything railroad doesn't stay clean long or ever. Um, one of the areas you usually get a lot of weathering in the real world is the spray from the rail from uh, cars on either side that these bottom areas here in like a u-shape will be the dirtiest um, so give it a little more grime um, I don't go too too crazy and touching my work alright so anything else? It's pretty good. And like I said, it it dresses up these floors and the roof. Um, and it stayed pretty weather tight. I haven't had many problems with it at all. And what in less than ten minutes, I've you know taken a cheap uh, model and really dressed it up for. The outdoor. So it's in a picture. It's actually not that bad. Um, so give you more grime. The other place you tend to have more weathering too is along the edges of the roof. Um, so all right, I'm gonna stop the video here, and we're gonna go outside and talk about some changes I made to the Emmyville Railroad.
All right, so we're back out here on the layout. And it's a really cold, raw day out here in Massachusetts. It actually was just snowing and then rain and then back to snow and stopped for a little bit. So uh, if you notice from the earlier videos this spring, I've actually added more trees. And there's actually a little bit of logic to where the trees are planted. They're staggered so that when you're sitting back here and low taking photographs, it looks like there's more trees than there really are and add some depth. So wherever you are taking your pictures from, there'll always be more trees in the background like that. Uh, I also added some rocks over there and over here just for some contrast during pictures. Also, the biggest change I made so far to this railroad after trial and error was I changed out this curve. Uh, the Forney number nine, it's been one of the videos, just would grind to a halt in this curve. And I couldn't figure out why. And it was actually due to the, that locomotive was a lot longer than the Ruby, which has no problems on any track. Um, and actually, I got a, the old radius on top of this, so you can actually see the difference. It was it was it was a pretty sharp difference. So, um, in doing that, I had to take the siding, which was here, and then flip flop them. I actually kind of like it on the interior better. Um, it's a little bit safer from the Toddlosaurus Rex that I have when she comes out here. So, uh, if you wondered why I was lighting that engine inside the house, it uh, it's really cold here. Uh, it's kind of hard to gauge it right now, but it's very, very cold here. Um, and I would probably burn through a whole tank of fuel, if not three quarters of a tank, just getting that engine the steaming pressure. Uh, so I light them in the house, I let it warm up in the house, which is, you know, 65 degrees. A lot of 65 degrees to start with. The butane has vapor pressure, because uh, it's, you know, in the 60s. Uh, if I brought it out here, the, the, the butane would not want to vaporize. So, um, let's go in the house, we'll get that engine out here now that it's warmed up. And we'll uh, take Ruby for a run, towing the maiden run of the new barber caboose that we just, uh, decorated.